What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about Battlefield 2042 update 6.3, which is about to roll out tomorrow, uh, January the 13th. And there are quality of life updates and there will be also a squad spectator modifier for Battlefield Portal. Uh, and we've got a new event. So we're gonna go all over the patch note to see uh, what's coming, what quality of life changes are we going to get and all of that. But before we start, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. That will really help the channel to grow and help this video to reach out to more Battlefield players like yourself. And definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're following Battlefield 2042 or just Battlefield news in general, uh, because everything will be covered here as well. So let's just jump right into the patch notes. All right, so we've got a look ahead for the Year of the Dragon event. We've also got Squad Spectator modifier for Battlefield Portal that allows for one life or tactical squad custom experiences. And we've got personal player color identifier improvements as well. So the update is kind of a hot fix as DICE uh, refers to it. So we've got some quality of life changes both to specialists and to weapons, as well as a new event and some changes to Battlefield Portal. So uh, let's jump right in and see what's going on. So starting off with the Year of the Dragon event, uh, to celebrate this occasion, all players will be tasked with earning ribbons in order to unlock the Harmonic Balance weapon skin for the Super 500, as seen above. So you can see the picture right here. Uh, it's a decent skin. And you've also got a Curious Spirit weapon charm, as well as additional XP boost and tier skip to help you kickstart the year. So what's going to happen is we've got a event called Year of the Dragon. Uh, we've got some awards that we have to kind of earn ribbons to unlock them and that's the only way DICE thinks this should be. And further below they mentioned that some of these items are also a part of a new store bundle arriving with this event. Earnable items that are successfully unlocked also reduce the overall cost of this store bundle. So let's go to the change log. We've got squad spectator modifier for Battlefield Portal. And you will now have the ability to enable squad spectating within Battlefield Portal custom experiences. This will allow you to spectate your squad mates after dying before entering the deploy screen once more to redeploy similar to the experience within Hazard Zone. As a part of this update, we will also be introducing the ability to disable the button on this spectator screen, which will prevent you from redeploying, allowing for custom experience to feature one life or tactical squad modes while still allowing you for spectating your immediate squad. So I'm not really a fan of Portal. In fact, I don't even play Portal anymore. My whole playtime in Portal is like one hour. That's, that's like everything I know about Portal. So I'm not gonna uh, kind of go over this change a lot. For you guys who play Portal, you probably know what this is about. So we've got AI, Soldier and General Improvements starting off. Players will now see a crossplay status indicator within the main menu if they currently have crossplay as off. So I'm not sure uh, this applies to the people who have crossplay on. There should be a, a status indicator, I believe, for both people. But what it mentions here is it will only show this uh, crossplay status for people who have crossplay off. I believe it should be for both. Maybe that's the case. Maybe there's something wrong written here, but that's cool to have. I believe it should have been there like from, from the get go, but we were kind of used to getting things two years later. So this is also one of those things. We have extended the personal player color functionality to include more hot elements. You can set your own color, which will be visible to yourself within the hot section from the option menu. So probably we can just customize the color for our hot, uh, just, just a bit more. I don't think it's a big deal. There's, there's really nothing more to it. So let's get going. Gadgets and specialists. Fix an issue where the head hitbox of a player mounted on Crawford's Vulcan could become misaligned. So this happened to me a lot when playing against Crawford players. Like when I want to snipe them through that gap in between the shield, that just wouldn't register as a headshot. That's really annoying when you only have one shot and then you're dead. That really matters, okay? So uh, that's one of the problems I was facing back then. Fixed an issue that could cause a player to not see a successful soft lamb lock on against vehicles. So I've come across this quite some time. I had a friend playing soft lamp for a while. And this actually refers to when one of your teammates essentially locks onto a target or let's say laser marks it or paint it with the soft lamp, everyone in the team should be able to see that lock on prompt coming on, right? Everybody in the team should be able to see it and lock on it, but that is not the case for all of the teammates for some reason. That was a glitch and I've come across it for 
quite some times. It was like my friend was locking onto a target and I couldn't see any targets, but my squad mates could. And that really ruins the efficiency of Southland because the only thing that Southland can do is actually locking on a target and showing that to all of the teammates, right? So when Southland is not able to do that, then what is it able to do, right? So that is something that should have been fixed and will be fixed soon. The penguins have applied extra glue to the C5, so they should now stick to vehicles with greater efficiency. So I'm pretty sure you guys have come across this issue as well. Maybe you don't know it, but I'm pretty sure you guys have come across it and were like shocked why this is a problem. But uh, let me put it like this. Sometimes you throw a C4 at a vehicle and it just glides, starts gliding down slowly on the ground. That's the issue where uh, this quality of life updates will fix. Now the C4 will stick better to the vehicles and will stay there. It actually stays on the impact point, sticks to the impact point, let's say. So that's something good to hear. The APS-36 shootdown Sentinel should no longer intercept smoke grenades. Now this is a double-edged sword right here. It's a nerf to the shootdown Sentinel for Irish and it's a buff for smoke grenades. Now this is really interesting because in maps with tight corners like Redacted, reclaimed exposure even where shoot down sentinel is really effective you can easily now throw a smoke grenade block visual and just push and just destroy whatever defense systems they've got and kill the players so easier because the shoot down sentinel will no longer intercept with smoke grenades that means the smoke will basically work in the same place where the shoot down sentinel is deployed so that's what this change brings. Fix an issue where if both an enemy and friendly fire tracer darts at the same vehicle, the target acquired prompt would sometimes be missing. Well, this is not a very important change in my opinion. There are so few people who play tracer darts actually, and uh, I don't think this uh, really matters at all. Uh, fix the target acquired prompt to sometimes be shown on destroyed vehicles. So I've come across this one a lot uh, where someone locks into a vehicle, that vehicle gets destroyed and the lock on prompt is still there. So your teammates can actually lock onto the destroyed vehicle and actually shoot it. So that's just a waste of resources, but it is what it is, you know, that's, that's going to be fixed. Fix the SG-36 sentry gun, sometimes targeting destroyed vehicles. Because I've been grinding a T1 mastery for Boris since forever, I've actually come across this issue thousands of times. Like, the vehicle's destroyed, but your sentry gun just starts shooting at the destroyed vehicle for no reason. It even deals damage. I don't know if that even counts for the Boris progression for a T1 mastery, but it, it deals damage. The sentry gun actually uh, thinks that it is a target. It is an actual target while the vehicle is just destroyed. So that's gonna be also fixed. Now there are some things about Battlefield Portal. I've actually read them and it says, added math blocks for common use tasks that we noticed players were performing a lot within custom experiences. So degrees to radians, radians to degrees, ceiling, floor, P. That's just some mathematical things being explained. I don't know what the hell is that doing in a Battlefield patch note, but you gotta ask guys for that. We're just gonna move on, okay? I don't think this is actually worth our time. So let's move on to the weapons. But before we start, let me tell you, there's no nerf to the VHX D3 just yet. At least not anywhere in this patch. So let's just get on with the weapons. Uh, fix an issue that could cause empty magazine in the SVK to still contain bullets visually. Well, that's a visual glitch, doesn't really matter in gameplay. Fix an issue where the carry handle of the VHX D3 sometimes didn't render correctly, which is again, another visual glitch. Fix texturing issues on the P90 magazine, another visual glitch. Minor fixes to stats of certain low magnification sites on the collection screen. Probably the red dot or 1.5 magnification scopes have some stats inaccuracy, so that's going to be fixed. Fix an issue that resulted in some high recoil fast firing weapons from gaining vertical recoil after the angle exceeded a certain value, which is pretty much interesting to come across something like that. But imagine having a high recoil, high rate of fire weapon, and the only thing that keeps that weapon balanced actually starts going out of the equation. <laughs> Imagine shooting with a weapon and there is no vertical recoil to it. That's very interesting, but it is being fixed. Fix the discrepancy between the collection screen and ammo count in game for the ACWR extended magazine, which I do exactly know what this is about. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at this in game. For the extended magazine on the ACWR, it shows 36 bullets, but that's not actually the correct stats. The correct stats is 40 bullets per magazine for the extended one. So that's gonna be fixed. 
fixed a clipping issue when using the PSO1 scope on the SCAR H, that is for portal, corrected the pros and cons of the high power magazine on the G428 in the collection screen, which again is another stats inaccuracy that will be fixed, corrected the rate of fire stats for the ACD42 in the collection screen. I mean, the collection screen is just a mess. Nothing's accurate, you know, what the hell is going on? So that's going to be fixed for the AC-42 as well. Fix the alignment of some scopes with the rail of the M416, which again is a visual glitch. Fix the alignment of the ACOG scope on the M60E4 LMG from Battlefield Black Company 2, which is again just another visual glitch. So we've got vehicles here. The change lock to vehicles is somehow interesting. Fix the variety of issues related to interactions between vehicles, systemic damage, and EMP, including scenarios that result in a permanent vehicle disabled state after being EMP. Just imagine being in a vehicle, someone throws an EMP grenade at you, and you're disabled for the whole match. That disabled stats wouldn't go away. You just can't get out of being disabled and <laughs> that's just ridiculous that should really make the driver angry i would be pissed off if i ever had come across something like that the ebaa wildcat now has access to air radar the range of this can be altered in air radar settings within the option menu if there are vehicle players watching this i really appreciate an explanation for this one down in the comment section so uh let's get that from you guys EMKV-90 Torque canister coax can no longer be reloaded manually, which makes it just a bit slow, I guess, but uh, that's also kind of a balancing change. Fix an issue with the replenish icon and weapon replenishment were not correctly matched on Battlefield Portal vehicles, which is, I'm just going to leave it to Battlefield Portal. Regular body damage to the Night Bear will no longer result in systemic failure. So I guess uh, it says it all. You should shoot some specific parts to be able to do that, which I don't believe anyone ever does that because the Nightbird is just moving fast and there are angles to it. And that's just really complex. And I do believe uh, that's just a balancing change to the Nightbird. So it won't be pretty much weak against like normal bullets. Fix an issue where air vehicles would not take damage when colliding with skyscrapers on hourglass. So that's like a day one problem. There are videos all over the YouTube just showing this issue from day one until right now. Like the jet basically flies into a skyscraper and nothing happens. It just takes close to zero damage, literally. And that's gonna be fixed, thank God, after more than two years. Reduce the magnet effect that some helicopters may encounter while being close to the ground. So basically when helicopters come close enough to the ground, the game actually believes that they're trying to land. So there's a magnet effect that basically makes them stick to the ground. And that magnet effect will be reduced because uh, some pilots probably like to just fly at lower heights and that magnet effect probably causes some issues for them. Uh, at least that's my perspective. If there are pilots watching this video, you can just explain down in the comment section and I'll be really grateful. But there's something that they've removed from this patch note, and that's actually explained by Battlefield Comms on Twitter. Additionally, we had hoped that update 6.3 would include the improved map rotations quality of life change as listed on our roadmap to season seven. And this change is still on its way and will reduce the likelihood of playing the same locations multiple times in short successions. While this won't arrive for update 6.3, please stay tuned for more details on when to expect this in a future update. It basically says it all. There's this problem where you might play one map twice in a row. That's just the map rotation failure that's happening right now in the game. And they've promised to fix it and fix it with this update, the update 6.3. But now that's just delayed to another future update and God knows when. And that's the only thing that's been removed uh, from this update 6.3. With that said, uh, the patch notes are completely explained. I'm just kind of happy to not see the VHX D3 being nerfed. Maybe DICE is doing something right after all you know i've actually got a video uh, explaining why vhxd3 does not need a second phase of nerfing and that will pop on the top right corner make sure to check it out as well but for today's video hope it was helpful if you've got any questions about the patch notes or you've got anything more to explain just comment down below and i'll be really grateful and i'll be answering every single comment so until next time guys stay cool